أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بماذا لكم أن نزل لكم سيدي رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول أول الأمر منكم and that I uh, remind always for myself and Abdul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskin, Zalim, Jahal. And by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, in this path towards the reality of the qalb, that the Divinely Heart of Holy Qur'an, Manzil uh, Qur'an that holds the Heart of Holy Qur'an Surah Yaseen is the name of Sayyidina Muhammad This path of ours is a way towards that door of realities that Surah Al-Inshira is a light that Allah to deposit within the heart of the seeker to open towards the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. That when we study the, the taif of the qalb that we have from the qalb, the sir, the sir sir, the khafa, akhfa. So means that we have to already be familiar with the lataifs of the heart. If you have the, the book does it have an image of the lataifs? Is there a book of the qalb here? Looking strange, that's one of the books we have. For those who didn't read the book, <laughs> you get charged double. Thank you, sir. So it goes Qal, Sir, 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 Khafa, Akhfa. So it means these are. Uh, and behind the aqfa is our five maqams. Behind the aqfa is the ocean of fana. And once the fana and to be obliterated, that the entire form becomes like particles completely wiped out. So, when you see the images of a black hole on the animations, something goes near the black hole. Just the gravitational power of the black hole shreds the planet into pieces, into dust, into particles. This fana. When the form and the identity approaches the ocean of fana, it will be obliterated and turned into dust. When Sayyidina Musa asked Ya Rabbi Um to see you, at that moment he reached the station of obliteration and qashiyah, became like powder everywhere. Baqa is to be, I don't know what's the word we use, self, sub, substance, subsistence, tongue twister, subsistence. So baqa is that once Allah make you like a powder, He brought back Nabi Musa from the ocean of that reality he appeared. So the mulk of him, the form of him that came to the earth had to be obliterated and then Allah make him to appear from the ocean of power. At that time he testified, an awwal al-Muslimi. Means whatever falsehood to the level of the great prophets, everyone has a, as the drops of imperfections as they're trying to reach the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Allah obliterated, He understood that ocean of reality and then Allah made him to appear in the ocean of baqa to be returned and since what he saw, ana wa muslimi means he saw the Muhammadan haqqaiq when Allah described, we showed our glory to Nabi Musa Allah's glory and pride is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So means then this study of the lataif where Allah Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah. It's not the study of 
our heart but the Divinely heart, the house of Allah Those whom are interested in reading and understanding about Allah's house, Allah's reality of the heart and what it should be not what we've made that heart to be. So it means the heart is in a state of ignorance and we ask to be guided from ignorance to the ocean of light. So only Allah put Suratul Inshira in our daily awrat seven times to be recited for the reality of that seven. And each verse of Suratul Inshira is going to be dressing that lataif. So the qalb alam nashra laqad sallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Alam nashrah laka sadrak Stop, that's the lataif al qalb. Means that that ayat al kareem is dressing that lataif of the qalb and that in a state of ignorance if Allah doesn't grant hidayat and guidance, what do we say on Jummah, hadan Allah. There's no guidance but except that all guidance comes from Allah we say every Jummah. Yeah, there is no guidance except that Allah guide, means the ignorant heart cannot get out of ignorance without the Divinely guidance dressing it. Allah has to decree that this heart will leave its state of ignorance and it will now begin to gain a state of light. So means that on the lataif of the qalb, alam, nashra, means that this light of Allah's hidayat and guidance will begin to move towards that heart. And the heart that is in a state of ignorance in a state of worshipping the dunya only through that light of alam nashra that did we not, where Allah said, did we not expand your breast? Means as soon as the Allah give the command this ayatul kareem begin to hit into the heart and it hits at the lataif of the qalb and begin to expand the way of ignorance to be taken out and the way of truth is now coming. Because it's in a darkness so we said even if you light one candle in a dark room immediately oh darkness begins to move from it. This is the power of light. It could be infinitely dark, it could be infinitely corrupt but if Allah says, I guide, I send the light. If the haqq comes it hits the falsehood. So this is Qulja'al Haqq. Now the Haqq of Allah has been destined for that service, for that servant. Many servants and most of the people sitting have had an experience of light, something in their life even if they're born into Islam but were far from that reality or whatever their faith and background God sent a light and experience something that happened to them, something that they were brought down. They hit the bottom of the bottom and there's only the way up after that. And that becomes a light of guidance that enters into the heart. Then only Allah say, from that alam, alam nashra is the alif lam meem, that the whole of realities of the Muhammadan heart is going to be now moving. It's like a, a fountain that will be moving towards that servant. They are the servants who carry this reality of Suratul Inshira upon the earth. They carry that reality on the earth, they speak from the Muhammadan haqqaiqs like a fountain flowing. As soon as that fountain overflows and begins to move it begins to dress all of creation. And when Allah putting alif, lam, meem in that station of the qal that Allah want, I want the whole folding of my realities of Holy Qur'an wa alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan, all my haqqaiqs are now going to be flowing into that servant's heart. Just from the, the ocean of guidance of hidayat, this is a huge ni'mat. 
that Allah when He gives He is not distinguishing, I don't want to give to this or to give to that but when I send the light of guidance you have the potential for infinite capacity. Why is it that you don't seek it? And awliyaullah come just say from the alif, Lam Meem, Izzatullah is the unfolding of all creation. The alif Izzatullah was the secret that wanted to be known. I am a secret and I want to be known. We repeat for 10 years, maybe somebody will pick it up. <laughs> 10 years later it's okay because everybody has a time like a flower, they keep watering, watering, watering. You never know when that blossoms and say, aha, I understood what you meant. Allah is saying, I'm a secret, I want to be known. If you come against Allah's secret then how angry Allah becomes? Not if you come against Allah because no one in the Qur'an says, if you come against Allah, Allah become mad with you. But if you come against Muhammadun Rasulullah I'm going to punish you because you came against my secret. So Allah was a hidden secret wanting to be known that this alif is now going to be the unfolding of all the secret of creations and universes and for murtu malakut. It flows on the lamb and the lamb is lisan al-haqq, is the tongue of truth. That every reality is going to be coming through this tongue that is an ancient tongue for Allah I created this soul to speak for me. You don't think Allah sitting on a chair somewhere waving to people, Hi how are you, welcome to paradise, welcome to paradise, come, come please to paradise. No, it's Allah's greatness is not like that, Allah's majesty is not like that. So I created a Khalifa, I created a representative, His holy tongue speaks for me anciently. That no prophet passes that, no angel passes that. And that's what we're talking today Sayyidina Jibreel on Isra wa Miraj, no way could beyond Sayyidina Muhammad he doesn't exist beyond there. He's from Nur Muhammadi, can you go above where your existence is? It's impossible. Between Alif and Meem there is no one. Between Izzatullah and the Meem of Sayyidina Muhammad there is nothing, he is the Ummi. So means there's nothing, all the secret and izza and might of Allah is going to be known through this lisan. I'm a hidden treasure and I want to be known. The lamb is that which will make Allah to be known because the izza is always hidden, the alif is always hidden. There's no place you come and you meet Allah but you'll see the signs of Allah You'll understand the attributes of Allah you see the beauty of Allah's creation. All these not sharif is that we made this earth beautiful for Prophet because he would be walking on this earth, Allah made all the flowers, there's no flowers on the moon. He beautified this planet because the holy feet of Sayyidina Muhammad would be walking upon it. All the flowers are in the ishq of that love. Every ocean, its beautific lights, its beautific colors, all was Allah's way of showing His love for Sayyidina Muhammad His secret that He wanted to be known from. Then the meme is its unfolding. Everything is in that ocean of the meme, Bahrul Muhit. The all-encompassing ocean, nothing is outside of that meem. So when this alam nashra means this light of all haqqaiqs because only the light of truth can begin to come, means this Muhammadan light of Allah sends and begins to move to the heart of the servant. That is the haqq of Allah What's the haqq of Allah this light of Hayyu al Qayyum, this light of Sayyidina Muhammad like an arrow hit into the heart of that servant that Allah wants to guide. 
it begin to open that lataif. It, that's why the lataif is the station of qalb, is the station of knowledge. That the only way to open under the control of Sayyidina Adam salam, under the control of Sayyidina Jibreel salam, all of this study of the heart and the lataifs, this is the station of knowledge. The knowledge has power and the knowledge will set you free. If you're ignorant, you're jahal, you're outside of everything. That's when we described even the, the triangle on the pyramids of the body. Will give you power out of darkness because darkness is called zulm. Darkness is called oppression. Anything that is in darkness has been oppressed. The only najat from darkness is haqq and the only haqq of Allah is Nur Muhammad The most perfected haqq. That all the Prophets, that's what we started off with, all the Prophets wanted that reality. They had a degree of the truth, they wanted the complete. They wanted to witness the reality. So from the Qa'ad, the first ayatul kareem of Surat al Insharaf begin to move. From the Qa'ad, the next lataif is the sir. The sir is red and represents the struggle in life. The Qa'al was Sayyidina Uthman, Jami al Qur'an al Majeed, the compiler of knowledge of Holy Qur'an, the station of knowledges. The sir, Sayyidina Omar al Farooq, Qajal Haq was a Haq al Baat. That you have to stand for truth and you have to fight every type of wrong and oppression. Don't let oppression stay. Then you're not oppressed, you're just submitting to the bad. Oppression is when you stand for it and say, it's not going to come, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to let shaitan overtake me and just say, oh yeah, this is shaitan is making me to be angry all the time. No, no. The station of you have to stand for the truth of what's right within yourself, not to let the bad come. And then what Allah says in Ayatul Kareem, the second ayat. وَوَضَعْنَا أَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ وَوَضَعْنَا is that ease of burden and the support of the truth is now entering into you. Because when you're in darkness and zulamat there's no way to pull yourself out of it. So of course you're going to be burdened and in difficulty. So the light now is moving, this light of truth is coming. Second ayatul kareem begin to hit your sir so that what? To empower your fight against evil. That this difficulty that overtakes and keep putting you into difficulty, keep putting you into vices and in harm, keep making your heart to be dark and not the heart that Allah wanted, that second ayah begins to dress that sir and lift the servant out. There has to be a madad and support that coming to the servant. So it means that this Surat al Inshara is loaded with realities that begin to expand. Surat al Inshara's history was that Sayyidina Muhammad when he was young, his heart was opened. When he was with Sayyidina Halima out as a child, he said that he came one day, Sayyidina Jibreel came and laid Prophet down, opened the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Showing what? That there is going to be a day of open heart surgery. Took the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and whooshed it from Divinely lights. Took out anything that shaitan could attack his heart with and pure and purify golden and put the heart back. And Surat al Inshara was about the opening and the relief of difficulties and burdens of the Muhammadan heart to Allah but the inherited reality of Surat al Insharaf for us is that Allah I'm going to now send guidance to you. Only Allah they have experienced in their life that they saw their heart be opened, the regular heart taken, a golden heart put in and upon that heart is written, Rasul Allah. And they beat and they live based on that reality. And that gives their heart, their being, their soul, their immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad Allah puts them through an insharah, Surat al-Inshara. 
Allah puts them through and opens their chest, take out their heart, take out all its badness and its incorrectness and make it to be golden and written Rasul Allah upon their chest. It's not something that you can, you can go with a corrupt and broken car and reach to the heavens. No, Allah is going to modify the whole system, it's going to have a complete overhaul. Only people know that now by… imagine if you had a phone from 20 years ago. Have you ever seen the phone from 20 years ago? It used to be like this big and had a box with it that you had to crank the box and it didn't call anyone because nobody else had that same phone. <laughs> so what Allah gave you now? He said, I give you the top of line technology but almost daily updates are coming, weekly updates are coming. So it means that that insan who's normal person is not going to reach towards that realities. He has to seek a path of du'a that, Ya Rabbi change me, change me, grant me guidance, open my heart. That's why then when they come towards guidance and awliyaullah they give them wazifas to read, read this daily, not for your head. We said this path not for the arrogant. The arrogance say, oh, no, no, no shaykh, thank you very much, I don't need anyone, just between me and Allah. That's the aqeedah of shaitan. Shaitan said, I don't need these Adam and Bani Adam, I deal directly with Allah Good luck for you, let's see how that plays out. Those whom consider themselves da'if, Ya Rabbi I can't fix myself from anything, I can't stop myself from talking, I can't stop myself from doing bad things. How I could possibly think I can reach to you without a support, without a help? As soon as they come to the guys, the guys give them, do this all right. As soon as they're doing that and reciting that, these lights are now moving because they are the recipients of that light. They're not telling you to do it because you just do it for entertainment. But as you're doing it, light from their hearts will begin to reach out to the students. And they are the recipients of that secret when they've been given permission to speak it begins to have a light that flows out of its realities. Because this is a book on the house of Allah This is not a book about your heart, this is a book about Allah's house, all His prophets, all His angels, all His energies, all His latayfs, all His realities to the extent that Allah allowed that knowledge to come. So we want to know about Allah's house and those realities that begin to teach. From the sir to the sir sir, the sir you battle, you battle, you struggle. Then Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq comes and tells you, Mawt al-Qabl al-Mawt, don't be like a fish you're just struggling, die. Don't hold on to your life and your possessions, we want you to die, stop your struggle. Stop, you know, I have to have it all, I have to conquer it all, I have to, mm -mm, it's not going to happen. Just accept, Ya Rabbi, I didn't come for this world. You made it comfortable, no problem, I didn't come for here. I want to reach there, I want to reach my eternity, I want to reach all my realities and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq comes, then Mawt al-Qabl al-Mawt, surrender and let this difficulty, these burdens, this zulamat means then you truly don't want the evil, you want the light. So alam al-mithal begins to open, sir sir is the world of light is beginning to open, why? Because you're dying. If you're not feeling death you don't understand what this shaykh is talking about. You tune in for two seconds say, what is this guy talking about? Why don't you just talk about wudu and then change the channel. You have to be halfway dead to understand or to be interested in us, right? You have to have the flavor of it. Oh Shaykh, I've been through so many horrific things, I'm ready for heaven, I'm, I'm ready, I'm at heaven's gates. Means you have one foot there and your one foot is here, it makes sense to you. So then they tell you, now take the other foot too, don't, don't hold on both sides because usually you fall onto the gate like that. <laughs> you fall like that, you, you get hurt. So, <laughs> some people are on this side and Allah wants you come to that side. So you begin to step into heaven. If you step you understand what the shaykh is talking about. If you're on the other side you say, I don't know what it is, I change the channel. 
because now you're closer to the state of death. So sir sir what Allah give from Ayatul Kareem from Suratul Inshira. Qari sir. Alladhi anqar dhahrak wa rafa'na laka dhikrak That's four. <laughs> the third ayah. Alladhi anqar dhahrak what weighed you down, what we described the whole just now. That which weighs you down and pulling you onto the earth, Allah is going to send a relief and a state of death begins to enter upon the servant. That which weighing you down that I have to conquer, I have to conquer, I have to conquer, Allah this light of guidance begin to come and then they start to text, Shaykh, I don't know how to go to work anymore, I just don't feel it. Before I thought I was going and I was going to conquer the whole office and take the manager's job. Now I'm thinking, oh my god, I never want the manager's job, I just want to take my paycheck and run. The flavor gone, it's starting to, the servant is entering in a state of death. This burden of hupa dunya, this burden of conquering this earth is leaving and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is dressing the servant with mouth al qabl and mouth that come to the world of light. If you begin to open and open your heart and your eyes into the world of light, the mazeh, the taste of this whole dunya is gone. But if all you see are the cars and the buildings and that's all you want, that's all you're going to try to achieve. When they begin to teach and say, meditate, contemplate, a few khash begin to open into the heart of the believer because Allah wants to say, look at all my paradises. Are you kidding me? You want the fake lights? I'm about to give you the real lights. And people have immense experiences of lights and angels and fountains that angels come to them daily giving them something to drink, something to dress them by. Allah's kingdom is infinite and nobody can say no, it's not possible. Whom Allah gives the kingdom to, nobody can say no because nobody can limit Allah So then now you're dying, the burden is being lifted, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is dressing, giving his inheritance. What was the inheritance of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq? That I left for my people, La illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah All his children are the Naqshbandiyya, the Aliyya. Why? He came to Prophet with perfect faith, Ya, Ras ya Rasulullah I left nothing for my family. I gave them only La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah, everything else is in Allah's way. So we inherit from the Siddiqiyah reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as Salaam that, Ya Rabbi everything in your way, our life, our time, everything in that way to magnify the beatific station of Sayyidina Muhammad that make Allah most pleased. What you're going to, to, to raise the status of Allah and magnificent station of Allah This is just no focus on Prophet Live a life in which you propagate that reality and that love. Now when you're dying from sir sir the khaffa is a station of resurrection. Because once you're dead and Sidna Israel comes and teaches you die. And Allah in Surah Al-Isha describes that I I went through the Bab as Siddiq and I left through the Maqa as Siddiq. Because the two angels are going to teach you, your death is a noble death, your resurrection a noble resurrection. That in this life you're willing to surrender yourself with a noble status. And Sayyidina Israfil comes and teaches you how to die with a noble status that we're going to raise you now into their presence. You're not going into a chal. You surrendered willingly to put yourself down nobly and we'll lift you with a nobility into that presence. So then what's this ayat al kareem the most powerful reality of Surat al-Inshira? Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak Sa khafa wa rafa'na laka dhikrak 
ورفهنا لك ذكرك why because as soon as the servant is in a state of dying and dying and dying there's an event of faith begin to happen in their heart and in their soul at that moment when that light and that world of light is opening ورفهنا لك ذكرك they begin to hear the praisings of malaika and all of it is on salawat an-nabi وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرِكَ They entered in to the dhikr of Allah Not the zikr Allah, dhikr of Allah. It, immense power. There is nothing more powerful than the zikr and tasbih which Allah is doing. Not the mentioning of Allah's name, the dhikr in which Allah is doing, وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Their soul is now moving into the oceans of malakut and everything is Allahumma and praising upon Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what Allah meant, did we not raise your status? That your reality is known through all malakut. When the Prophets talked about the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad they mentioned him by Nabi Ahmad. Not Muhammad and Mahmud but Nabi Ahmad that your name is Hamd and Allah attached upon your holy name his Alif and gave you his Izzatullah. That your mulk and your power is Illahi and if somebody to look at it they would think that this is Allah's power. Beyond imagination. That why Allah at that maqam begin to explain that this name Muhammad is Hamd. Hamd is praise, the reality of praise begin to open for the servant. They didn't know what they were praising. That's when Nabi Musa said, oh, Ya Rabbi I want to see you. I don't know who I'm praising. I want to see wa rafa'na laka dhikra. I will be raised in that ocean in which I realized all oh, this praise, all this hamd from Muhammad, Ahamd is all a praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad And Surat Yasin comes and describes the dhikr, innahu dhikrun, innahu dhikrun wal Qur'an al He is the dhikr of Allah and he is Qur'an and Mubeen, the walking manifestation of the Qur'an. Nobody saw the Qur'an, there's no Qur'an that manifested until Prophet spoke it. Allah describes the reality wa rafahna laka dhikrak because now Surah Yasin is inside, Surah al Inshara is taking you to that reality. That they have to send the light, these awliyaullah are sending lights into the heart like plumbing, <laughs> jackhammer, depending upon how, <laughs> how bad the heart is. Hitting with a jackhammer and taking away the calcification. As soon as they begin to die and they khash, they enter into the world of khash where they're continuously seeing, seeing, seeing. What are they seeing? Because you have to hear first before you can see. When we say seeing, what means is you have to hear first. You hear the beatific praisings, you hear the salawats, you feel the power of the salawats. They bring you to tears. This is from the secret, rafahna laka dhikrak. That you feel the magnificent status in which Allah put upon that reality and that everything is in the ocean of, Inna Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi that's, that's it, that's all that power is dressing up on their soul, they're entering into that oceans of power and praise. Then Surah the, the, the Lataif al-Aqfa, the Aqfa is the ocean of where it looks like a black hole. So the Aqfa is that you're entering in, this is the reality of how you're becoming a star. Allah sending you a light to light up your qalb, to light up your sirr. To light up your sirr sirr, light up your khafa and then taking your wujud, your being into the akhfa, into the black hole. Because from the black hole what came out are suns. So if you see this image, once you enter into the black hole and become annihilated 
you will begin to appear like a sun on earth, more powerful than the sun in the heavens. And that's why Prophet from here described that, all oh, my companions are like stars because I'm a star maker, I make them into stars. So what happens at the Akhfa and the station of annihilation? <laughs> Two Ayatul Kareem because your struggle is going to be a lifetime. That if verily after difficulty comes ease, not after ease comes difficulty means the station of annihilation for the shaykhs, for awliya, for all those who are following is a continuous life of struggle. Struggle, struggle, struggle because as much as they died and as much as they're entering into these oceans of light, as much as dunya is always trying to come back and bring them down. And Allah's rahmah is He sends a difficulty upon them to crush that dunya, crush everything. So they're in a continuous state of difficulty and then ease, difficulty and ease and the dunya is like that, the womb of a woman is like that, that there's con con constriction and expansion, that there's a, a, a crushing and a releasing, a crushing and a releasing. Every crush is a maqam to achieve and the release is they experience a new maqam. Because every time you, you crush and push the baby's coming out, a reality is coming out, what are they called? Contractions. They say the earth is also contracting daily. All the earthquakes and movement of the earth is also contracting. So there is no growth without these contractions. That every difficulty comes, you'll be squeezed because Allah want to give you now a new maqam, then an ease comes. You feel, oh this is nice, oh how, how nice this was. Then again <coughs> crushing and then a new maqam. So their lives are under continuous testing. For Nabi Musa he said, I want to see Allah As soon as he saw that reality, Ya Rabbi I want where the two rivers meet. He says, now you're entering in Yusri Yusra, Inna ma Yusri Yusra, I'm going to send you to Sayyidina Khidr he's going to insult you very badly. He's going to give you a test that you, you could not imagine. It's going to put you through difficulty. It means the one whom speaks to Allah met Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Khidr says, yeah, you, you have to go away. How are you going to have patience with me with knowledge is not complete to you? One after another insulting Sayyidina Musa Why? Because he said, I want to be with Sayyidina Muhammad I want that maqam. You want that maqam then I'm going to have to put you through the same system. And every Prophet entered into that system. Every Prophet went through the difficulty to reach towards that reality that Allah want to dress upon them. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yaseekoon. Well, let's finish then quickly before people get sleepy. وَرَفَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ They entered in, in مَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى They went through annihilation and difficulty. Fana, we said before fana is when you're being obliterated now. The fana is that your, all your pieces are vanishing and you entered into an ocean, you're no longer the drop but now you're in an ocean. Maqam al-fana when the awliyaullah would speak they would say, An al-haq and then the people would kill them. He didn't speak from his mulk reality, he spoke from the ocean of fana because he didn't see himself anymore. He lost and Prophet obliterated his being to be in an ocean of oneness, in that ocean of oneness of realities, not oneness with Allah but in this ocean of annihilation that Allah wanted to dress. So what Allah described? The surah, the seventh verse of Surah Al-Inshara. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَرْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَرْ The fana for fansab is that we freed your body from the grip and the struggle and that your soul will be victorious. They say like stand up for prayer, that's not the understanding of that ayat al kareem But Allah is describing in this ayat al kareem that we have 
put down your body, we have crushed your body reality and now your soul is now moving into its haqqaiq. Next and last verse is what? Because the soul is now moving in that ocean from fana. Fana is then annihilate, baqa is that Allah makes now the soul to appear in that ocean with all of its majestic might and power. And what Allah describes? Wa ila rabbika farqa. Rabbika farqa. Means that their soul is in the presence of their Rabb. Their soul is in the presence of their Rabb, this whole inshira for wajikil kareem. These awliyaullah who understood and was dressed from that reality, they are the souls that are in the holy face of Allah That their whole wujud was smashed, brought down, nothing, Rabbika means that at that moment make your case to Allah and their understanding of Rabb going to be in different maqams and understanding. Allah will open for them a Divinely face in which their soul to face that and make your case to that soul, to that face, make your du'a to that face. We say, Haqiqat al-Tawassul wa Haqiqat al-Tawajjo. Tawassul is that and tawajjo is that their reality reached to a face. They have to reach to a face, that face dresses them, blesses them, gives them light and guidance and their tawassul is they merely make the du'a to that face and everything is conveyed of what people want. They're not asking from themselves, they make the connection to the face and that face hears, sees, breathes and speaks of that reality and that's the responsibility goes towards the heavens. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.